Some cancerous tumors in the gastrointestinal tract can cause obstruction or blockage, preventing the ability to obtain adequate nutrition and sleep, potentially creating life-threatening complications and inhibiting additional treatments. When the blockage is located in the esophagus, food and liquid cannot pass, and the patient will have increased salivation, which raises the risk of aspiration or breathing in of the food, liquid, and saliva into the lungs. Alleviating the blockage and improving nutrition for the patient is the first step towards treating the cancer. And endoscopic stenting, a procedure to place a flexible tube that opens the blockage, is a preferred solution since it allows patients to eat naturally through the mouth and avoid using a feeding tube in the stomach or the small intestine. Feeding tubes may compromise the stomach, which will be needed later when the cancer in the esophagus is removed. However, many hospitals may not opt for the preferred stent placement method since they may not have the expertise to place correctly size and or suture endoscopic stents. New endoscopic technology allows the access and placement of stents in a wide variety of GI locations and has drastically improved the safety and effectiveness of the stents. In this example, the esophagus contains a cancerous tumor that has grown into the lumen or space within the tube of the GI tract obstructing the passage of food during digestion. An experienced, fellowship-trained interventional endoscopist accesses the esophagus by inserting an endoscope through the mouth and into the esophagus. After the location is observed and confirmed, a guide wire is inserted through the tiny stricture or narrowing in the lumen of the esophagus. The placement of the guide wire is aided by fluoroscopy, an imaging technique similar to heart catheterization. Then, a specialized catheter a thin tube is slid over the guide wire and placed adjacent to the tumor. The catheter contains a preloaded stent. The guidance and placement of the catheter is also performed with endoscopic and fluoroscopic observation to ensure correct positioning. Next, the endoscopist slowly pulls off the outer sheath of the catheter, allowing the stent to expand into the lumen of the esophagus, while observing through an endoscope and using fluoroscopy. The stent pushes out the tumor expanding the stricture created by the tumor, and thereby reopening the lumen. The diameter and type of stent is just as important as the length, since it is critical that the stent fits and performs optimally, which leads to the best outcomes in patient tolerance, and lowers the risks and side effects during other cancer treatments. Finally, the stent is sutured or sewn in place, preventing further movement. This is especially important for patients pursuing radiation or additional chemotherapy. With the natural course of digestion restored, a feeding tube or IV nutrition is now unnecessary, so improving and promoting natural eating and sleep habits. <laughs>